have you got, I mean, what what all have you got ready? Have you got more than one batch, or are you just opening with one mead? What's the plan? I've got four meads ready. I might bring on a fifth that won't be bottled yet. But they're all traditionals to start with. Okay. Uh, they're, they're, um, I've got a meadow foam, a coffee blossom, mm. a clover blossom, and an orange blossom. Because one thing I think is really important, especially to people that may, might not have a lot of familiarity with mead, is that there are just so many different types of honeys, and it doesn't all taste like the stuff you get on the shelf at the grocery store. I love that concept. Yeah, it really, it really doesn't. What's I, I've never had coffee blossom honey. What's that? What's the characteristics of that? You know, it's really rich and dark. It's got um, quite a bit of maltose to it. Um, I mean, it was... The clover blossom I had was water white, and, and still in the bottle, it, it just looks like water. But the coffee blossom came in very, very dark. Uh, it's from Mexico. Oh, okay. And uh, you just pretty fragrant and, and fruity... And uh, it's going to, I think, do really well standing on its own. I made one several years ago, um, and I cannot find the same source, but I know it's from the same part of the, that country. So, um, and, and I haven't have any it. This is the first time I've seen it since. Does it have any um, uh, feeling like a uh, relationship to coffee? Or is it just completely just a floral? No, it's just floral. It, it's not, uh, I don't get any coffee notes to it at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. I, that's, that's one I'll have to, uh, that's one I'll have to try. I, I, yeah. I, I'm really interested in that. It sounds, sounds like it might be, you know, fun. Yeah, I feel that that would be um, one of the biggest marketing issues that people have. If you if you do call something a coffee blossom, you're instant, instantly putting the idea of coffee in people's head. You know, like they, they have a coffee stout or a coffee this, and and mm -hmm. if it doesn't taste anything like coffee, that would be a, a challenge to to educate and um, and to explain that it's the the blossom, not the bean. Yeah, right. And and that is a big part, I think, of what um, mead makers have to have a responsibility to do is to educate the public on what the product is and and is not you know what honey is and is not yeah yeah i wonder i wonder if it might not since especially since you're working with you, you know you're, you're kind of spreading out into the varietal world might be fun to do honey tastings to go with mm -hmm. meat tastings you know mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, one thing I want, want to do is head out to uh, Massachusetts in a couple of months here and go to that American Honey Tasting Society seminar that they have. Have oh, any no. of you guys done that? I, I saw it was coming up, but my grandchild is due, like, right around the same time, so not oh, this year for okay. me. I'll probably get to go next year, but... Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm basically on hold for travel right now because uh, we're on the countdown last last 60 days or so. So it's like, awesome. not, not moving. <laughs> oh, good luck. Yeah. It's a bit, bit of a long drive for me, and Vicky's got me, well, she reckons she's got me going to the Mazer Cup next year. So um, uh, we're <laughs> I hope out. so. Well, he, that's that's what he's going to have to do if he wants me to come to Australia. So there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tit for tat, my friend. <laughs> okay, cool. Exactly. So yeah, maybe yes. hopefully, hopefully we'll all get to meet Hamish in person in person at the Mazer Cup next spring. <laughs> That'd be fun. God, we'll just tear it up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <gasps> so okay. Um, so there, what's going to happen on the twentieth? I mean, you're you're opening, but what what exactly are you? What are you doing? What are you? Are you uh, planning to make well, this thing happen? I'm going to be doing taster flights and you know selling by the glass. One thing I'm not going to be making happen is bottles out the door because 
you know, as, as a bunch of people told me, just get the doors open. Well, I don't even have labels yet for these <laughs> bottles. I saw so you I'm... were getting your artwork done, what, a week ago? <laughs> no, 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 no. That That's from a couple of years ago. Oh, I just finally okay. updated the web page or, or the uh, Facebook picture. Oh, Haven't okay. updated the web page. The web page still says we're not in commercial production. So that needs to change. Yeah. <laughs> um, so many things and to I'm, do. So little time. Right, mm. right. But I think what I'm going to be doing is uh, discount sales. And so whether you're you're buying online or whether you come into the tasting room, um, until these bottles have labels, any bottle that's sold between now and the time I get labels will be sold for a discount. That makes sense. So it's sort of a pre-buy kind of thing. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. I like it. And that's neat because then they kind of get to, they get the whole, you know, I was in before it was like really. I was cool in before animal. it was cool. Yeah, before the cool kids yeah. were there. So, yeah. My bottle so what, you're, what you're telling us is meat is so mainstream now we can actually get clean skins of meat. You can get what of meat? Clean skins. Uh, sorry, that's what we call bottles without labels uh, that are uh, typically, you know, they're, they're second rate sometimes um because they had a glut Who's or they had and they just things? yeah couldn't be bothered putting labels on them so we just sell them cheap with no no branding on them or anything because we've just got too much that kind of of, of thing oh, okay. yeah i have a feeling the feds would uh-huh. not be happy with me if i started just selling clean skins out of the gate so. <laughs> <I think> the <laughs> yeah not to screw anything up here yeah. i think the ttb might have something to say about that <laughs> exactly, yeah so, so well. that's just one little, one little, um, you know, one more little thing that we need to have patience with. That okay, point. Hamish, stop doing the dishes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or is that, or is, or is that Manny, Manny checking stuff? his AC? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody didn't break a, a meat. Sorry, glass. that was me dropping something, and I muted. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> Not fast enough. <laughs> Not fast enough, my friend. <laughs> oh, uh, so back to back to me. Um, are you are you planning on having a tasting room? I do have a tasting room. Yeah, that was the. Um, I actually um, got into this space uh, thirteen months ago, and the tasting room got built out between Thanksgiving and, and New Year's. Uh, tasting room and bathroom. And there, there was nothing in there. There was a, a bank of overhead lights with one light switch. There was no other electricity than that. No outlets. Ooh. No plumbing. Nothing. So um, that was that was one of the expenses that I did not budget for. Ooh. Lights out. Lights back in. I think we're getting a storm here. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, when you when you when you have a budget for something like this, and you know, you always want to go go big. But um, the one thing is, <clears throat> you know, it's like life. It's like a house. It's like your partner. It's like a job. There's nothing perfect. There's there's good and bad aspects about everything you do, everywhere you go, everyone you know. And what is, you know, can you work with what um, the downsides are? You know, and, and are the upsides a big enough plus to say, okay, yeah, I can deal with that. And, you know, it just happens that it was in a, decent place it was in a decent building um the neighbors like i said are a winery um and so i am subleasing from them and as part of that deal i get to play with their toys you know i need a forklift i can borrow their forklift or their oh that's sweet or their bottling line uh, so you know there's uh you know if i'm if i paid 15 grand for this build out there's Fifteen grand, at least, that I don't have to spend on equipment for a few years. So it was, mm. you know, you got your pluses and minuses, uh, and it's working really well for me. I got somebody to bounce questions off of, uh, and and to 
give me a little bit of guidance on how they do things. So, yeah. That's been huge. Yeah, definitely worth uh, doing a little bit of construction in, uh, in return for being able to borrow a forklift. Exactly, and, and to be able to have any kind of overflow customers back and forth and to be able to do some joint marketing uh, and events with them uh, just gets more bodies in the door for both of us mm -hmm. as opposed to kind of being in the middle of a, of a uh, warehouse all by myself and a bunch of people that aren't around on the weekends that have completely different businesses that don't tie in at all. Yeah, well, as Vicky's always saying, uh, a rising tide floats all boats, so it's really cool that you're being able to make this work with your with your neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that makes, it, that makes a huge difference, and yeah, I'm with AJ. Uh, forklifts are a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> right? Girls, girls gotta be able to get to a forklift, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not not every yeah. girl's got a big strapping husband like I've got, and I mean even he, even he, I wouldn't make him lift a fifty-five gallon drum. <laughs> yeah, I uh, need John Talkington for that. He can lift a fifty-five gallon drum to hear him say. Oh, sure, Mark probably yeah. could. I just wouldn't want to make him. Yeah, well, I say John has done it, but I, I also hear John complaining about his back, so I'm guessing John probably shouldn't be doing it. So oh, no. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's one thing it does not have is I haven't. Uh, I haven't bought one of those contraptions that that allows you to handle barrels, so I'm not purchasing honey in barrels yet. Mm. Uh, but I suppose that'll come eventually. Oh yeah. Well, and honestly, I mean, clunky as it is, you can do it with a big dolly, but it's it's clunky, you know. And yeah, of course, exactly. There's no way to get it up to the top of the fermenter. Yada yada yada. You need, you know, then you're at a pump and a heater and all of that other stuff. So. Yeah, no, I've got a better method, and it involves buckets and a converted <laughs> keg and a go. pump. And and my big takeaway from last uh, fall's intro to mead making course out at UC Davis was from Ken Tram. He says, "Get yourself an immersion blender, a wearing immersion blender. It's like." <laughs> three feet long and it's got a huge it's got like a boat motor on this thing and it's like oh yeah so it's like There's a rolling motor cord. with a cord huh? <laughs> it is yeah you go online and you see a guy with That's a hilarious. huge like a, a 10 gallon vat of baked potatoes and he makes mashed potatoes out of those things in about 30 seconds it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I totally want one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me Just too. so I can say I have this, this immersion blender. freaking huge immersion yeah, blender. That I can blend it's... a lake with, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you can blend a... Well, maybe yeah. a pond. Or a pond. Or a small pond. Don't you know? try to degas your mead with one of those. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I mean, I've heard about that. Are we speaking things. from experience, or do you just yep, hear yep. this? Yeah. Oh, no. Is it worse so than bocheting, anybody... honey? Uh, it... I haven't done that yet. That's the next thing I want to do. Yeah, well, uh, listen to last week's show before you do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, from yeah. what I understand, it's okay, you know how you can't turn your back on beer? Right. On yeah. steroids. Okay. And with a lot <laughs> less liquid. Okay, like, so five gallon, five gallon pot and a half gallon of honey, and you still better be watching it and ready to yank it off the heat. Ooh boy! Yeah, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah I've, I've uh, heard sure that can you, be pretty sketchy. If you've ever made caramel, it's the same thing. Yes, you know it, it'll, it'll go from almost almost just getting brown to done in three seconds. Seconds, yeah. But it is so worth it. Oh yeah. I've got, oh. a, I've got a bottle of commercial Boche downstairs that I ran across also while I was reorganizing the stash last weekend. And um, it, and I was like, aha, I have a commercial Boche, so I think I'll drink that next week. Yeah, there were, I uh, got to judge the category that had Boches in it this year at Mead Fest at, at the uh, Mazer Cup, and boy. They're good, aren't they? Uh, they they really are. I'd never had one before that. There were some that you know were obviously burnt, but there were some that was just so wonderful. And I, I a couple of people had done them with bananas, and it's oh, like, yeah. oh my god, 
god, it was so, so it's like a yummy. I want a foster bake- in a glass. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh my yeah. god, it's so good. Yeah, and it's like what I love about a boche is the creamy aspect. 